What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning back in to another Fly Time tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a streamer. I've had some requests on my YouTube as well as my Instagram to tie up some more trout streamers. So I thought today would be a great opportunity to show you a new pattern that I've been working on for the spring. So I'm going to get a fresh hook in the vise here and we'll get going with this tutorial. So the hook on the vise right now is a mustad streamer hook. This is a size 6 and since we're using this for our back hook, um, I'm not going to be using the whole shank. I'll only probably use about three quarters of the shank, but I wanted something with a bigger eye because when I attach this to my front hook, I want my wire or whatever material I'm using um, so this will um, have more of a range of movement um, in the water um, rather than just a uh, smaller streamer hook. Instead of using a whole shank and a smaller eye, I like to use a... Um, bigger eye than about three quarters of a shank. The thread we're going to be using is just some GSP. This right here is um, Vivas and it is black and it is 50D. So I'm just going to start my thread there and I'm just going to come back to about actually the hook point. That's pretty much all we need. I'm just going to get a little base here. I'm going to stop at about a eye's length behind the back of the eye and we're going to be tying in our first material which is going to be some marabou. It's going to be for the tail and this is just a Sculpton Olive Strung Marabou and I'm going to tie that in right on top. Then I'm just going to Take thread wraps back, just like so. And the reason why I like to tie this whole thing in is because I want a nice smooth body here. Now you can kind of come in and just trim out. these kind of fluffy fibers let's put some thread wraps on that it's like so so for the actual body of this fly we're going to be using hen um, this right here is kind of just a olive and you're going to want to since this is the back part of the fly you're going to want to start kind of at the bottom to midpoint on the actual hide because you want this to taper so um, you want to try to use all these big fibers at the top for the front fly so it actually tapers down into the back so for this part on the back back hook i'm going to be using kind of like the midpoint here on the uh on the hide and um i'll show you how to tie in one then um, I'm going to fast forward it just so it doesn't get repetitive because it does get a little bit repetitive but um, I think it looks really good once it's done I really like this kind of uh, barring that these uh, feathers have so all I'm going to do is just get a little clump about 10 fibers or so 10 feathers um, off the off the hide so they're kind of in the same location and all I'm going to do is I'm going to prep this as I would a soft hackle just like so I'm actually just going to tie this in get my hackle pliers here Kind of get these fibers all laying back. And you're just going to wrap this in as you would a soft tackle. So once the stem's there, I can come with my thread and capture that. 
kind of get all these fibers just pointing back. Just like so. Now you're gonna repeat this all the way up the hook, hook shank until you get about to, I'd say an eye's length behind the back of the, uh, back of the eye there. So I'm going to fast forward this part so I don't bore you. And I'll see you once we get to the front of the hook here. Okay, so once you get that all tied in, I left a little bit of space here. I'm gonna throw a little bit of flash in here. Then I'm also going to add a couple Hungarian partridge feathers. So for the flash, we're just gonna put a little bit of flash in this and we're just gonna be using some ripple ice fiber and this is in olive. And I'm pretty much just gonna grab about six strands Tie it in here. And I'm just gonna bring this to the back of the tail. I'm gonna grab a little bit for the other side here. like so. Kind of just taper these fibers so they're not cut off straight. Just like that. Now I'm just gonna throw in two little Hungarian partridge feathers here. Um, just add a little bit of um, barring. I really like the look of uh, Hungarian partridge, and I just think it matches up pretty well with this fly. So I'm just going to grab about two, two big fibers here. Then I'm just going to strip them down as you would any other soft tackle fiber. And if you leave a little bit of this fluffy stuff on it at the bottom, that's perfectly fine. It's, uh, it's just gonna add that much movement, more movement to your fly. So I'm just gonna get these lined up. And hopefully, I can tie both of them in at the same time. So I find it just easier to do with your hands on this one because it's hard to get the uh, the hackle pliers on both stems. So we're just going to wrap these in here. Capture both those stems. I can cut those out. Let's build up a little head here. It's like so. Then we can just throw our whip finish in.
throw two. Make sure it's nice and tight. Then we can cut out our thread. Then I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, Loon Outdoors thin just to build up a little head here. Nice durable I can hit this with the light for about 15 seconds or so. Then I'm going to get my front hook in the vise and I'll get back to you once I have that all set up and uh, ready to finish off this fly. So the front hook we're using is a one size one stinger. This is a Mustad stinger. We're going to be using that same thread. And for our articulated material, I'm just going to be using some 25 pound braid in olive. Well, I guess it's kind of like a green color. But the reason why I like to use braid for this is just because um, it's got a little bit more movement than the actual um, like Senyo's wire. And since I'm only going to be using one hook on this fly, um, it's a little bit um, easier to kind of just use this. And I know that um, this back hook isn't going to be having fish on it, so I'm not too worried about um, the material that I use. No spacing. Uh, beads or anything like that. We're just going to go straight to the shank. If I can get this through here. Got a little bit of a uh, loon outdoor in that head. So pretty much I want it about almost to the back of this uh, hook bend. Not too much longer than that. As you can see this has lots of movement. With that bigger hook eye it's got more room to, uh, to move back and forth. So I'm just going to kind of bring this up. Cut those off. Bring up this braid. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these two pieces. I'm going to put them down through the eye. Like so. Then I'm just going to use my thumb push them back and secure them in underneath this shank. This is also how I tie in my wire if I was tying two hooks. Just so you know it's never going to get pulled out. So I'm going to Bring that back, then I'm going to put in some of this more hen, and we're just going to keep repeating the process. Um, I'm probably only about to put five, five uh, feathers in, and this time I'm going to be using the bigger ones at the top, so this fly has a little bit of a taper to it. You don't want it to be kind of all one size. You kind of want it bigger in the front and kind of just taper back into this um, back hook. 
So I'm going to get about four to five pieces here. And with these bigger ones, um, you don't need as many because they're a lot longer. And since this uh, hook's just a size one, um, it fills up pretty quick. So I'm going to do another fast forward here. Try to make this video kind of quick as possible. And I'll get back to you when I'm done with this front section. So once you get all those fibers in there, you can kind of, I find that these bigger ones kind of uh, get stuck a little bit. So I'm just going to come in with a little piece of Velcro and just brush it out. So as you can see there that I got a nice little taper going from the front to the back. And we're just going to tie in a little bit more of that flash. We're going to stack a little head here and it will be ready to go. So for this front section we're just going to be using that same ripple ice fiber. Just going to grab a little clump here. Tie it in on each side. And with this one, I like to kind of let it blend into the back part of this fly. So I'm grabbing about, I'd say about eight. Back one was six. This one, I'm kind of grabbing about eight. I really like this stuff because it almost has a kind of a taper in it because they're all different lengths rather than crystal flash. Um, you would have to cut it to length and everything like that. So I kind of just let this kind of just bleed back into the back, uh, back fly. Try to leave a couple of them kind of straggly long. It's just going to add to the whole kind of uh, lifelike look to it. Now we're just going to put a little head on here. We're just going to be using some elk hair. And the reason why I like to put just a little bit of, um, we're just going to put one spin on this is because I want it kind of like a, a stiffer head um, to kind of keel water, push water. And when I'm kind of like holding it in riffles and like kind of like jerking it up almost, I kind of wanted this to sit straight, and I find with it just this, it um, it gets really really thin, and it um, it cuts water nice, but it's just really it compacts a little too little too thin for me. So um, you can either add a um, a deer head deer hair head with some um, uh, dumbbell eyes, or in my case here, I like to use these uh, fish masks. So that's what uh, I'm going to do with that. So I'm just going to get a um, about a pencil pencil diameter stack of this elk hair dyed olive. I'm going to throw it in my stacker. Give this a nice little stack in here. I just want a short little head here. I'm going to probably put it about half to a quarter of my body of the first fly. I'm going to take one, two, 
Then I'm gonna get my nail, my finger, kind of just try to get this around the whole shank. So I can turn, tie that down, kind of go through some of those fibers so it doesn't spin on me. Then I can just cut out all this. So it's not much, but I find it helps a lot. Um, you can put two on here if you want. But I find the one is just enough. So I'm just gonna cover up all these little butts here. Now at this point, you can just throw a whip finish in. Then I'm gonna throw my fish mask on here. So I can just add a little dam after. So this fish mask, I actually use it on another fly, but the, uh, the fly actually died. So I'm just uh, reusing it, recycled, recycled helmet here. So the eyes are already on it, six millimeter. All I'm gonna do is put a little bit of super glue inside this head. I'm gonna push it up on. Do these elk hair fibers. That'll get my finger all super glued. Just like that. I come in with my thread again. Just build up a little dam in front of that fish mask, even though I know it's not going to go anywhere. Build up a little thread base. Throw in a nice whip finish. Make sure that's nice and tight. Cut out your thread. Then I'm just going to come in with a little bit more of this Loon Outdoors thin. And I just like to give this whole thing a coat. Kind of get it down in there without gunking up your eye. I just got a little pin here. I'm just going to put down through that eye so when I cure it, it doesn't go in there. Once that's done, you're pretty much good to fish. So I'm tying this right here for trout, so it's about four inches or so, just a single hook, and that's because the water that I fish is um, single barbless hook, so that's why I um, can only use one hook. But if you're tying this for bass, or even pike, you can tie this bigger for pike, um, I would definitely suggest using two hooks. Um, just because uh, you may get short striked, but um, with this it's only four inches long, so I know um, these trout are just going to uh, eat the whole thing. So once that's cured, just take your pin out there so you can fit your line through, and uh, you're good to fish. So if you're uh, in the market for some nice 
uh, trout streamers. I definitely uh, suggest tying a couple of these up and trying them out. And like I said, you can tie these for bass too um, if you want to tie them a little bit bigger. But I think this is definitely going to be um, a fly that's going to be in my box a lot this year and um, at the end of my tippet. So hope you liked today's video, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the fly or any of the materials or anything like that, uh, please feel free to drop that down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the ch channel if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.